Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar. In terms of human microbial perspective, there is an expression that says, in fact, we are not pure human. We are a type of superorganism of human and microbial cells. But what does it mean exactly? How exactly does this impact in our health condition? How do we know if our microbes are healthy? My name is Hamid and I have made this webinar to help you to answer these questions. I am a Master Health Sciences student in the Medical Genomics program at the University of Toronto. In this webinar, I will give you a basic understanding of gut microbiome and describe a bacterial identification method by means of 16S RNA2. Here is what we will learn in this webinar. I will start with an introduction of humans microbes features and I will focus on some current microbial issue in respect to health care. I will then introduce how 16S RNA gene is used for bacterial identification. This will point out why many clinical labs interested to use 16S RNA gene. Finally, I will provide a brief conclusion in this webinar. Let's get started. What really are we? According to the literature, our body consists of about 30 trillion human cells and 39 trillion bacterial cells. Therefore, we are actually ratio 1.3 to 1 bacteria to human. So, it seems that more than half of our body is not human. Such a massive bacterial community in our body, along with other microorganisms like fungal and viruses that we have, is known as our microbiome. In this video, however, I will focus on bacteria due to their dominance in our gut overall other microbial population in the body. You may ask yourself, how many species of bacteria are in our gut? Human gut microbiome is a large and complex microbial community. In total, over 1,000 bacterial species have been found and approximately 160 species being found in the gut of any individual. Considering the fact that each species may have many strains with particular genetic properties. For instance, it has been reported that the human gut microbiome may contain up to 150,000 different microbial strains. Besides, it is not just the number of bacteria pointed out here, but in fact, the number of genes these microbes can carry. It is estimated that the human gut comprises nearly 2 million genes in which about 40 genes were found to be exclusively shared by human and bacteria. So, you can see that we exist with equilibrium with our gut microbes population. Again, you may ask yourself, what does this bacteria do for us? Actually, they do a tons of things for us. They make lots of molecules and carry out lots of function in our body. Bacteria in our gut produce metabolite like vitamins, which are helpful in metabolizing polysaccharides and oligosaccharides. They have a key role in food digestion and extracting energy from food, breaking down toxins, removing carcinogens. They regulate the immune system and help to control potential pathogen in our body. They even have a crucial role for our nervous system to be in balance. And last but not least, they generate a positive bidirectional interaction between our gut and our brain. In fact, you can see now, bacteria in our gut act as a little pharmaceutical company, and they are in fact a kind of virtual organ, and do as much as an average liver does in the body. The major question is, what happens if our microbiome 
is not balanced and healthy. Or what happens if you have low diversity gut bacteria? Normally the gut bacteria is a vast and diverse reservoir of bacteria which live in relative balance in healthy individuals. However, such relative balance of the normal gut bacteria can be easily disrupted and generate various illnesses such as IBD. By definition, such imbalance in the gut bacteria community that is associated with disease called dysbiosis. There are a number of different ways that lead dysbiosis. Just imagine you got infection and take antibiotics, or even you suddenly change your environment condition, like changing in your dietary habits. This may damage some of our useful bacteria and create enough room for some other bacteria called opportunistic pathogens, like Clostridium difficile, to grow and cause Crohn's disease or other diseases like Crohn cancer. Another question here is, how can we restore our healthy bacteria when such issues occur? An important potential approach for bacterial restoration is the manipulation of gut bacteria when broad spectrum of symbiotic bacteria obtained from a healthy individual fecal and transplanted into the gut patient. This is called fecal microbial transplantation. This approach has been shown to actually be useful as a therapy for enhancing or modulating the gut microbiome diversity. There are several ways for bacterial therapy. You can easily introduce the bacteria into the patient through rectal enama, nasoduodenal tube, colonoscopy, bacterial encapsulation, or even through growing some useful bacteria in a proper bioreactor, which can be then transferred to the patient. In order for microbiome therapy to be effective, we need to administer precise clinically valid symbiotic bacterial taxa that optimize disease resistance in our body. You may think we can simply grow the healthy bacteria in the lab and introduce them into the patient gut. If your answer is yes, you may not be completely right because only less than 2% of bacteria in the world can be grown in the lab environment. Besides, the majority of bacteria is unculturable at the lab condition, and choosing the right strain could be confound, and sometimes it's not possible to identify bacteria by conventional biochemical methods. Therefore, we need a culture-independent approach, which able to recover almost all bacterial toxin in any habit, thanks to sequencing method. In particular, 16S rRNA sequencing approach. This technique became gold standard to capture uncultureable bacteria without necessarily needing to be able to grow them. 16S rRNA is a small subunit ribosomal RNA gene here and is used as a tool to identify bacteria at the species and even strain level. At some point, you may be asking yourself again why many clinical labs are interested in using 16S RNA gene. This is mostly because of the following reason. 16S RNA gene is present in every bacterium and is conserved across all microbiomes. 16S RNA provides better taxonomic resolution compared with other genes. Of course, these features of 16S RNA is powerful when a bacterium does not fit any recognized biochemical profiles, I mean unknown pathogenetic strain. 16S RNA can easily identify bacteria at the species or strain level and assist with differentiating between closely related bacterial species. More essentially, 16S sequence databases are unique in size. For instance, NIH Human Microbiome Project contains 3,000 human microbiome from different human organs like GI tract, nasal, skin. So almost every 16S sequence read can tell you which bacteria are present in a sample and therefore it is perfect for many labs all over the world to use it. Finally, as I said before, 
16S RNA gene sequencing is culture independent technique, so it is perfect for the bacteria which are not grown at the lab. Now it's time to say how this technique works. This slide indicates a graphic illustration of basic work for gut or fecal 16S RNA gene based sequencing. For practical reasons, fecal samples are taken from patients or healthy individuals. Briefly, the total DNA will be extracted from stool. The quality of the DNA will be evaluated by gel electrophoresis and then will be subjected to PCR for amplification of the 16S RNA gene. In the next step, the PCR product will be sequenced and then analyzed for species identification using bioinformatic tools. Let's close look to 16S RNA structure to see how this gene is used for bacterial identification. 16S RNA gene is approximately 1500 base per long and consists of both conserved and variable regions. As demonstrated here, the gene contains nine variable region interspaced between conserved regions which make 16S RNA to be unique for bacterial identification. In fact, the conserved regions are used to design universal primer and makes PCR amplification possible, while valuable regions of the 16S RNA gene are frequently used for taxonomy and phylogenetic classification of the gene or species in diverse microbial populations. For example, as you see here, a PCR product is obtained using two primers which has been designed in the age of conserved regions to get a fragment between V1 and V2 regions. In this picture, you can see the position of the primers are in black. The purple line shows the hypervariable regions of this gene and highly conserved regions are in red. As you see at the end, to identify the right bacterial species, the sequence data generated here will be aligned and compared against reference sequence which is available on various databases. The table here indicates the ability of 16SR RNA gene target to identify clinically relevant genera. You see the percent identity of 16SR RNA sequence among distinct bacterial genera in the last column. This is obtained by comparing of the number of identical versus divergent 16S positions for various genera. Such percent identity and sequence data must be clustered to reveal meaningful taxonomic unit between the sample sequence and the reference genome existing on the relevant database. In this case, a patient with clear IBD symptom against reference database. Besides, the evolutionary relationships among various taxa is achieved by phylogenetics analysis using available software like MegaPackage. Finally, this diagram is an example to show how the 16S RNA gene can be used to detect human microbiome diversity among three different populations. Each color here represents the relative abundance of the particular family of bacteria among German, Ghana, and Indonesia population. Now, let's look what we have learned in this webinar. We have learned how gut microbiome diversity acts as a key role in our health. We have also looked at various potential microbiome-based therapy and described why bacterial identification really is the main challenge you may face with when microbiome therapy is going to be applied. More importantly, we have learned why 16S rRNA is a powerful tool for identification of clinically unknown pathogenetic bacteria. Thank you for staying with me to the end. I really hope that you learned something new about bacteria identification by 16S rRNA gene. Special thanks to Dr. Martina Steiner for technical assistance in preparing this webinar.
This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution for International License.